Hello everybody and welcome to the course. This is an exciting course. You know, a lot of people don't think about policy very much or in advance or, yeah, it's just something out there. Without policy controls, you are open to all kinds of risks and you, you are unclear about which controls, actual tool controls, are actually being implemented. So this is really a very exciting chapter. Some will see it as paperwork. It is not, is the furthest thing from it. It is the foundation for everything we do, and it's our link to the executive steering committees. So this is why I wanted to just do a quick overview of, frankly, the next 10 weeks uh, together in this uh, process. So uh, in the next few minutes, I'll be going over these objectives largely, okay? And so we start with security policy just as a general introduction, right? That really this should come down from higher level management, right? And they're gonna establish uh, the programs and controls that we need. And these controls, like change control, patch management, incident response, are going to themselves have sub-documents. So there will be documents, security documents, like security policy, and then sub-documents associated with those. So we should expect that one document is not a once-and-done clear fit for all. I would also like to say that executive commitment and support is the most critical factor to success for any of this. Management must support if we're going to have an impact, partly because management must support if we're going to have uh, enforcement of actions. Now, the uh, policies can be uh, mandatory, right? And so we'll use statements when you write your own. Yes, we're gonna write our own that will say will or will not, right? And we're gonna basically, when we write a policy, cover basic components like the purpose, the scope of the policy, responsibilities, even in, in terms of enforcement and compliance. Now, uh, policy uh, types include policy standards, guidelines, and procedures. But be, before that, we have a baseline. And a baseline generally defines the minimum level of security and performance. It, it provides or can include benchmarks for future changes, right? So we want to make sure that we have a security baseline. Then we want to assess the security policy. And this would happen, largely be approved at that executive steering level uh, approach. And it's basically the do's and don'ts. And this policy is what's going to have the sub-documents. Now, standards then might be at a a lower level steering committee like directors and VPs below the executive steering committee. Uh, and standards are specific controls, right? And notice that policy and standards are both uh, mandatory, right? They govern the acceptable level of security for software and hardware. Now, guidelines would be next. These are recommended. Uh, and we use when uh, the standards are not available or not as clear as we like, right? We'll use guidelines. And then there are pr um, procedures. Uh, sometimes they're called standard operating procedures or SOPs. Procedures are the lowest level of an information security program. And these are really step-by-step -step detailed instructions how security policy is implemented uh, and these make uh, policy repeatable. Now, uh, so why do we implement security policies? Well, for one, we want to make sure that we're compliant with regulations. Secondly, we want to follow the standards in our security program. So regulations and industry standards are really our approach to this. ISO 27000, right, is an info security approach, right, a standard we might use. And we'll look at those in later chapters. We'll also discuss HIPAA and PII and PCI, etc. So there are some notes there. Notice that uh, HIPAA, though, is a U.S. standard, right? I would be interested in knowing what standards might exist elsewhere in our discussion board. And then for PII, we always want to make sure we protect it and keep it uh, confidential. Now, there are uh, 
plenty of other policies to consider, um, such as acceptable use policy uh, or a password policy, right? Sometimes acceptable use is called acceptable use of technology instead of AUP. I've heard it referenced as AUT, right? Um, and we'll get into that in detail in this course. Now, password policy, right? The minimum max length, you want to have greater than eight characters. Uh, you want to have um, uh, the minimum maximum age. We want to define how long can we have the password. Um, the history of the password is going to define that we can't reuse a password, right? So the, the max age is how long we can have it. The minimum age is really to keep us from changing passwords to get to the one we really want, right? Which uh, subverts the system. A passphrase is actually the best approach to that sort of policy. Now, there are administrative policies, right? And these address how assets are configured. So in, part, in that, you'd want to include change management policies. Uh, these are changes made to the infrastructure. Um, it helps reduce mistakes, right? To avoid outages, right? So we want to test, test, test before we implement a change in the various environments, uh, dev environment, uh, prior to getting to a prod, for example, right? A UAT environment would be another one. Uh, asset disposal, right? We want a policy on that. We want to make sure that we have secure environment uh, for getting rid of uh, or destroying things like a hard drive, for example, right? Uh, we want to prevent exposing data because these things can be reused, right? Uh, so reformatting a hard drive does not necessarily remove all of the information. So you'd want to make sure you have the right asset disposal approach. Um, uh, a secure wipe uh, might be another approach. Uh, with vendors, you want to discuss service level agreements as a policy. What sort of uptime is required uh, from your vendors, right? Or defining the maximum allowable downtime. Uh, you can even do this between departments. It doesn't have to be external vendors. It could be de between departments within a company. Now, some other policies to consider. There are management policies. These are largely like those executive policies that I mentioned, right? And they should list adverse actions. I wanted to make that point. Uh, and in these policies, management policies, when it, we want to describe, as I mentioned, the purpose, the scope, the responsibilities, and compliance. I will be looking for those things in any policy we might write in this course. So there's a privacy policy, right? Um, maybe on how information and why it's collected and used, right? This would tie into any background you might have with GDPR or CCPA. Uh, PII or uh, PHI, for example. Uh, data classification, right? We want to make sure we assign a data label to information and to assets, right? And we may even have employees in some organizations that get a clearance level. In the military, we use top secret, secret, um, confidential, and unclassified, I believe. Uh, some will use uh, high, medium, low. Some will use public and private. Some will use just proprietary, right? There are many ways to do this. And data classification would be an important policy to have uh, in order to uh, do data loss prevention, for example. Uh, data retention is normally uh, three to seven years, and that has legal implications. Uh, we don't want to keep outdated information. And of course, uh, continuing education uh, would be important um, uh, and where this information is archived. Uh, other policies, you could have NDA policy, onboarding policies, etc. The list really does go on uh, and continues to grow. Uh, remote access policy, do you have to use VPN to remote access in? Uh, what about an access policy for a firewall? When you stand up a new tool, you want to type up your access policy to what port number, for example. So there's an access policy there. Physical security, we'll talk about in this course. Software policies, 
like what can be installed on your computer. Uh, IR policy, there can be a software policy, there, uh, as I mentioned. There's a, a backup policy for data, even, for example. Uh, we also could look at human resources policy. There's a chapter uh, in the book on this, and we're not, we're just going to skim past it, but read it if it's uh, pertinent to your level of work, right? So hiring policies are security policies to create a more secure environment, right? So you want to do a background check. That's really the best indicator of future behavior, right? Uh, you want to make sure people sign a non-disclosure agreement uh, and that there's a termination policy in place. Do we disable their equipment, their access to the network, collect um, their IDs and their computers, right? And even that can be broken down into friendly or unfriendly uh, um, termination. And then do we even escort them out would be another consideration. Um, and so uh, it, when we onboard them, we'd probably do a background check also, and maybe even a drug screening I've seen used. Now, other HR policies include mandatory vacation time. We want to enforce that. This reduces the risk of a security incident, actually. Uh, what about job rotation, right? A role can have uh, more than one person trained to do it, and that's always a positive thing. What would be your policy there? Separation of duties also prevents fraud, like mandatory vacations, right? Uh, it helps us avoid collusion, right? And the policy of least privilege, right? Which uh, you assign the minimum privil privileges required to do your job. Now, um, User education is really the best dollar spent in cybersecurity is user education, right? And, and, but you want to target that to the specific audience, the ad administrators or management or technical teams, privileged users, right? Um, data owners and system owners, etc. So it's important to target the training I would offer up front. Uh, in uh, user training, uh, we want to emphasize some of these goals, like password behavior, right? We already talked that it should be a minimum of eight characters. There's a min and max, and you want to use a uh, of history, and you want to use a mix of characters and always changing them, that sort of thing. Um, a lockout policy, right, which is going to help us against a brute force attack, for example. Data handling, do we have an encryption policy to encrypt, for example, all removable media like USBs or external hard drives, right? Um, is there a clean desk policy, right? Because people like to do dumpster diving. Hackers as a way of collecting information or even an, uh, an inter inside threat, an insider threat, right? We'll do dumpster diving. or So we want a clean desk policy. What's the proper storage of information, uh, even sensitive information, but all information, right? And what about personal devices, right? Um, uh, what's the acceptable use of them? Can we leave them in our car uh, in plain sight, even though our car is locked? No, right? So these are some things to consider when doing policy. Um, you would also have policy to address phishing threats, uh, zero day exploits, right? Um, uh, and social networking threats, of course, could be addressed uh, elsewhere. So this is these are just a couple of the things I wanted to touch on. Oh, and then finally, yes, keep metrics, keep metrics, training metrics. If people uh, are repeat clickers on a phishing training phishing link, uh, you send out a link email to everybody, and these three people keep clicking on it, keep those metrics. Those are people you want to focus on for additional training. Okay, that was just a whirlwind view of policy at a high level and a lot of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to this class and spending the next uh, 10 weeks with you guys discussing it.